The most insane twist ever possible. The case of Linda O'Keefe, case number 8. Linda O'Keefe, age 11, was viciously attacked and killed in 1973 in Newport, California, and her corpse was later buried close to a nature walk. The last time anyone saw the summer school pupil at Corner Del Mar, California's Lincoln Intermediate School was on July 6, 1973. Hello guys and welcome back to True Crime Network. Today, let's check the details of Linda O'Keefe's murder case. Now, let's dive into it. Linda was a bashful Girl Scout who enjoyed painting, crafting and playing the piano. Her mother praised her for being extremely skilled and for loving to express herself via sketching. She was a typical California girl who enjoyed lounging in the sun and visiting the beach. Linda frequently watched television and kept her room immaculate, even asking her mother to inspect it after she finished cleaning. She had recently lost her pet and was a sympathetic child. Her mother claimed that it was difficult to comfort her when it died. She took it quite personally. Linda had two sisters, the elder of whom she got along with very well. Her sister was an adult who resided at their parents' house and worked at a dry cleaner. Linda often rode her bicycle to Corner Del Mar's Lincoln Elementary School and belonged to the neighborhood youth center. But on that particular day, her piano instructor drove her to school so she didn't have to walk the short distance back. After summer school, Linda was last seen heading home unharmed. She was discovered dead in a ditch a day later by a man in a back bay neighborhood who was looking for frogs. She had been severely assaulted and strangled to death. The Newport Police Department chased lead after lead for 45 years, but every one of them ended in a dead end. Although it appeared that Linda's murderer would not be brought to justice, with the aid of the detectives, the murderer would be caught. The Newport Police Department said they will be utilizing DNA technology in their hunt for her killer on July 7, 2018, the 45th anniversary of her passing. Newport Police Department posted what seemed to be messages delivered straight from Linda on Twitter in an effort to spread awareness about Linda's unsolved murder and solicit information. There would be more. They ultimately came up with a sequence of provocative tweets that gave Linda's perspective on the final day of her life. Investigators used images of Linda's clothing to psychologically target the murderer. Police used Linda's voice in their tweets to create a chronology of the day she was killed. Linda had attended all four of the piano lessons she had that day. She bought bubble gum from a neighborhood shop a block from her school after her second lesson. She arrived back at school just in time for the start of her third lesson. Linda wanted to contact her mother after school to ask for a ride home, but the school secretary told her she had to wait until another time to use the phone. Linda walked back to Richard's Market where she had a couple of hours to purchase gum. She recognized her buddy Brenda there. Brenda claimed that as they were departing, a turquoise vehicle almost struck her, but she jumped out of the way to escape it. She noticed the vehicle stopped next to Linda a minute later. She couldn't tell if Linda spoke to the driver because of her distance. After arriving back at the school, Linda contacted her mother to request a ride. Sadly, her mother instructed Linda to walk home since she was preoccupied with the sewing task. Linda disliked going to and from school despite the fact that it wasn't far and was angry that day when her mother didn't pick her up. She left school sobbing, but instead of going right to home, she decided to sit at the intersection of Margaret Drive and Inlet Drive. Her mother got concerned when Linda failed to show up for lunch and started phoning her pals. They both went in search of her after waiting till her husband returned from work. They searched in two cars, one driven by Linda's mother and the other by her sister, but to no avail. If you're looking for an alibi, shoot the subscribe button. The police were notified at 6.42 p.m. about the disappearance, after which point the police started looking in the immediate area. They repeatedly used aircraft to explore the neighborhood meadows and woodlands as well. The family kept calling Linda's pals while everything was happening. A little girl called Jenny was questioned by police while they were searching for Linda. Linda was seated on a corner with a turquoise van parked the crossroads nearby when Jenny and her mother passed by in their car. Jenny's mother stopped her automobile close by after sensing something wasn't right. As the vehicle passed, she intended to take note of the license plate. But before she could get a proper look at the license plate, the vehicle swung around and disappeared from view. Linda was no longer seated on the curb. However, she was unable to tell if she was inside the van. A woman who resided at Newport Beach on a bluff and overheard a scream was another eyewitness. She said that she did not pay much attention to the disappearance of a little child and wasn't aware of it. That night and early next morning was spent looking for Linda. A local architect called Ron Yo and his young son were riding along the back bay, a nature route, in the early hours of July 7, 1973. Yao wanted to show his kid a place to gather frogs, but instead he saw something truly horrifying, for he had discovered Linda O'Keefe's corpse. 
Linda continued to tote a handmade book bag while sporting the clothing her mother had sewn for her. Linda's death was considered a homicide when the Orange County Coroner's Office discovered that she had been sexually abused and strangled. But the investigators were unable to identify the murderer. After Linda's death, Corona del Mar, a peaceful coastal community, was rattled. Linda's friends wanted to locate her killer just as much as the police did. As 11-year-old Terry Briscoe Corwin recalled, we all hopped on our bikes and wanted to help. They looked all around the city for the vehicle, but just like the police, they were unsuccessful. 45 years later, the controversial forensic method known as DNA phenotyping, which develops a realistic age progress profile of a perpetrator's physical appearance based on DNA and genealogy, was tested by police with the help of experts. A public profile of Linda's murderer was created and distributed. For more than 45 years, Linda's murder remained unsolved, spanning several generations of law enforcement personnel. Newport police planned to reopen the investigation and apprehend the murderer by utilizing both social media and cutting-edge DNA testing. Additionally, detectives uploaded Linda's DNA to a genealogy website. They learned James Allen Neal, 73, was a likely suspect in Linda's murder thanks to a tip. While residing in Monument, Colorado, he was detained in February 2019 and then extradited to Orange County, California. Neil entered a not guilty plea to the charges of Linda's death as well as the alleged indecent and obscene activities on two more girls under the ages of 14 between 1995 and 2004. The police were ultimately able to locate James Allen Neal, who was then residing in Colorado thanks to a family match they received in January 2019. He was a resident of Orange County, California, and in his mid-twenties at the time of the crime. James was put under observation and a DNA sample was taken, which matched the profile from the semen sample. James was therefore detained at his residence in February 2019 and eventually deported to California. The Oki family would at last receive justice, but this feeling of the potential resolution was very fleeting. Due to an unspecified ailment, Neil was brought to a local hospital on May 25, 2020, and he passed away a few days later. He didn't seem to exhibit COVID-19 symptoms according to the Orange County Sheriff. We intended to see James Allen Neal put on trial and make restitution for killing Linda Ann O'Keefe. Our community was profoundly moved by Linda's tale, said Newport Police Chief John Lewis during a press conference. We hope we have been able to bring a measure of closure to Linda's family, friends and loved ones through the tireless efforts of generations of our investigators. The statement continued. The Newport Police Department employed cutting-edge and efficient technology and investigation methods to locate and capture Neil, even though Linda's murderer was never brought to justice. The relatives of murder victims may find renewed hope as a result of these new investigative techniques. Barbara, Linda's mother, passed away in 2005, and Richard, her father, passed away in 2008, leaving Linda without any sense of closure or serenity. The investigators' efforts were not for nothing, though. They hope that the Oki family will no longer be plagued by wondering what happened to their cherished daughter. That's it, folks. We have come to the ending of today's video. Do you think the police could have solved this case earlier? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to check out our channel for more crime-related content.